Hey everyone, my name is Kathy Cronin from Broken Roads, and I'm here today for Amy Howard at Home to transform a vintage dresser. Now before we get started, I just want to go through the products that we're going to use on this piece, starting with the first one, which is Clean Slate. So Clean Slate, I use this on a lint-free dry rag, just pouring it on and then wiping the piece off, flipping this you know, continually as I'm moving along. And remember this removes all the dust, dirt, grime, wax, oils, anything that may prevent uh, your products from sticking to your piece. So we use this and you let it dry 10 minutes and then you're ready to go. That's the really awesome thing about Clean Slate is that you don't have to wipe this off. Just let it dry 10 minutes or so and then you can start with your next product. So the first product that we're going to use on here is Amy Howard's One Step Paint. I'm actually going to use Spa White all over this first just one coat because I'm going to use another product right after that. Instead of doing two coats of paint, I'm going to use one coat of paint and then we're going to use Crack Gesso. Now, Crack Gesso and I have been scary enemies for a long time. I don't know why, but I've been terrified of this thing and I shouldn't have been. I think the more that you use a product, the more comfortable you get to be with it. And the more that you play with that product, I think you also can learn how it's manipulated and how it's supposed to turn out. You know, use your opportunities for mistakes to learn from them and, you know, make yourself better at that process as you move forward. So I think over time it does get better. And for me, this was something that I was really, really intimidated by, but now I'm, I'm a lot more comfortable with it. So we're going to do two coats of cracked gesso all over this piece, and then we're going to apply milk paint after that. So the milk paint that I've selected for this project is Scandinavian Gray. I'm going to use this all over the piece, one coat, maybe two. And um, as that has starts to transform on there, you'll see the change, which is really, really neat. So I'm excited to see that happen. And then after that, I'm thinking about glazing it, maybe with a glaze mixture of Sunday Nap, One Step Paint, Water, and Glazed Over. Glazed Over is a really versatile product. You can use it with uh, gel stains to glaze. You can use it with your one step paint to glaze. You can even just mix mica powders in it and use it on your piece as a top coat. I love this stuff, it's so versatile. And then the, the very top of this piece, this vintage dresser, we're going to use a gel stain on it and then apply either matte sealer or Monero beeswax for a nice sheen. So here we go, let's get started. Remember when using clean slate to just apply it to a clean, dry, lint-free towel and wipe it across your piece, every once in a while flipping over your towel just to make sure that you're removing all of the dust, dirt, waxes, and oils from the piece before you apply all of your products. This will be dry in about 10 minutes and then we'll be ready to go with our next application, which is One Step Paint. I'm now applying one coat of Amy's One Step Paint in Spa White to this piece. I'm using the two and a half inch chip brush. Just one solid coat is all we need before the next step. Spa White is a great coverage color. It goes on very clean and really does cover well with just one coat. Next step is cracked gesso. When using cracked gesso, the ratio is one part water to one part gesso. Mix that together really well, and I like to leave it overnight in the refrigerator just to set up really, really well before I use it on my piece. I'm now applying it to the drawer with a one and a half inch chip brush. I'm just gonna do one thin coat all the way across the piece, and then add on a second coat once this has completely dried. The first coat of gesso has dried and I'm adding the second coat now to the piece. I am not sure why, but Maggie loves the smell of cracked gesso. I cannot keep her away from me whenever I'm putting this on a piece of furniture. All right, we've let the gesso dry on our piece now. We have two coats of gesso and we're getting ready to apply the milk paint. So the critical thing to remember about the milk paint is that you want to have the ratio was one to one. So equal parts of water and milk paint. If you get your milk paint 
too thick by meaning you don't add enough water to it it's not going to actually be able to pull off very well with the antiquing glaze that we're going to use here in a little bit on it so just keep that in mind it is much runnier than what you would experience with the one-step paint so don't be surprised by that and then also the recommendation is that you actually apply this on the flat horizontal surface rather than trying to do it up and down on a side because it can tend to run and you get all these drips it's not very attractive so ideally you know take your piece whether it's the outside exterior portion of your dresser and you have to kind of turn it from side to side or it's your drawers you set them on the floor like I've been painting them applying the gesso already set them on the floor and then be able to apply your products to the flat horizontal surface so we're mixing this right now remember I have the Scandinavian gray milk paint it is a powder form Looks just like this and once you mix this up you ideally would like to leave it in the refrigerator overnight um, just to make sure that it mixes very very well I'll probably mix it up then let it set a little bit come back through it again and then strain it because I'm not going to wait overnight for this and remember also that the the milk paint color when it's dry after you apply it to the piece is going to be about the same color as what is in the package when we add the water to it right now it's going to get quite a bit darker to start so you can see in here how it's kind of turning a little bit darker that's a lovely color I can feel those little you know chunky pieces at the bottom I'm probably going to use a fork or a little mini blender in this as well we'll get this all mixed up I'm going to let it set a little bit and then I'm going to strain it with just a little tiny strainer I'm just going to show you this real quick this is just from the dollar store you can get a couple of these for a buck and I like to use these for my paint if as long as you wash them out right away when you're finished um, they, they can be reused over and over again but this is a great way to strain your milk paint if you are not wanting to wait overnight for it to mix and blend really well together so we're just going to keep stirring this up I'm going to let it set and then I'm going to come back stir it again we're going to strain it and apply it to our piece Okay, I've allowed my milk paint to set now for quite a while and really dissolve well. One thing you have to remember is when it sets, the milk paint will tend to settle to the bottom, so you need to constantly keep stirring it when you're using it. Um, and then also, you know, when you're going to strain it, make sure that it's all really well mixed up before you strain it. So I'm going to drop the strainer over this, strain it through, and then drop, it in, drop the strainer into the water. I want to wash it out later, but if I set it right now, I won't be able to clean it out later. <clears throat> so this is really well stirred. Just going to strain it through to have a nice clean milk paint to start with. And you can see there's like some granules left in the bottom here, and there's a few left in here. I'm going to drop this into the water, and then we'll get started with our nice, clean, smooth milk paint on the drawers and the dresser. Here we go. Remember, you want to keep your milk paint stirred up. There's just a few tiny air bubbles in here, but you definitely don't want it foamy because it won't work on your piece. So just make sure that you keep it stirred consistently every time that you go to use it and apply a different section. I'm getting ready to put this here on this piece. So I'm going to show you how this works. Just one nice even coat. Cross your piece. I don't know if anybody else has this problem, but sometimes it's hard for me to talk and paint at the same time. <laughs> we are ready to apply the antiquing glaze to the milk paint pieces that we have completed. All of the drawers have been completed and the entire base of this finished dresser. So the first thing you want to do is add some antiquing glaze to a container like this. Uh, and then also you want to have water in a second container. And then you want to get a sea sponge. Any kind will do. There are all different types out there. You can get these from craft stores, the hardware store, even uh, you know like the big box stores. Pretty simple to pick up. And you can cut them into any shape or size that you like, that you're comfortable with using. And then you just want to make sure that you wet it down first. Get it really, really nice and wet. Kind of squeeze it out, just sort of to prime it a little bit. Then you're going to add your 
antiquing glaze to the sponge. Squeeze some of that out. And then we're gonna do what I like to call a pass over over the piece just to get it wet. And then we're gonna go back over it after we do that and start pulling off the milk paint with a sponge. This is just wetting it down right here. Getting some moisture on there. And then you wanna just take your sponge and start pulling the milk paint. Now, you can see underneath there the gesso. This is definitely uh, your preference as you're going along as to how messy you want it to look. I would just recommend that you continue to turn your sponge as you're moving it along on your milk paint, getting some of this off, but not, you know, that way you're not making a continual pattern over and over again. You can run it in streaks, you can run it to the side. It's really whatever your preference is. Also you need to remember you use a you need to use quite a bit of antiquing glaze. Don't do this in a real dry fashion. It has to be able to work into the milk paint. And you can see here in the middle I've got these little designs. I'm going to actually use some gilding application on here, which I did not talk about in the beginning. Definitely think that, you know, I've said this over and over again that projects sort of have a mind of their own sometimes. And this one has just definitely been growing on me as we've gone step by step. And I also in the very beginning did not mention the antiquing glaze, but that's always part of my milk paint process that you would use that along with the milk paint application. Okay, looking pretty good. I can always pull off more. I'm gonna let this dry a little bit and then I'm going to work on the second small drawer and just keep moving along. Okay, I wanna to talk to you just a couple minutes about gilding. There are two products that you need to get to apply any kind of a leaf, whether it's copper, gold, silver, or sterling to your piece. And that is, of course, the actual leaf itself. And I'm using on this project, the gold leaf. And also the gilding size. So I'm showing here in the book here, the gilding size right here. It does come in a small white container. And this is my container. I've used it a couple of times and the glue just is so powerful that it was hard for me to continue to get open. So I just put it into this little container here, a new clean one that I had on hand. So hopefully it'll be a little bit easier to open next time. I'm going to use the small, the artist brush on this piece because I need a smaller brush to apply it to the certain locations on the two drawers. And then I'm going to brush it off with one of these two Amy Howard brushes right here either this one and a half inch chip brush, any chip brush that she has will do, or you can also use the round bristle brush. So when you apply the gilding size, it is just this very powerful, like I said, white sort of glue. And when you put it on your brush and you apply it to your piece, you're going to let it set for just a minute or so to kind of slightly dry, and then apply the leaf to your piece. And the leaf comes in these little books. So inside of the package right here, you're gonna have these sheets. And this, I'm just gonna open this up and show you what this looks like. So this is the actual leaf right here. When you go to apply it to your piece, you're going to take off one section, and we'll go through that in the video, and then apply it to the area where you have glued it. You're gonna lay it down on top of it, burnish it, which means just basically rubbing across this uh, separator paper while it's on top of the glue to release the gold leaf onto your piece and then pulling it off. Once it's dry, then we're going to take our brush and brush off the excess. And I think on this piece too, I'm going to lightly sand it with 400 or 0000 wool, steel wool, just to give it like a little bit of a worn look since this piece has already got cracked gesso on it and it has a worn look style to begin with. So let's get started on that. I'll show you a close up of how that works. It might be a little bit difficult to see, but what we're going to do is apply the gilding size to these little indentations right here on this piece. It looks like that they were either stamped or uh, you know, carved into this 
on both of the top drawers of this antique dresser. <clears throat> so I'm going to apply the size and then we're going to let it come to tack just a, just a few minutes and then at that point in time we'll apply the leaf. So the gilding size is a uh, used sparingly. A little bit goes a really long way. So, you know, I'm, I'm wiping it off. There's hardly anything on here if you can see that. I'm just going to apply it into this little section, these little diamond-like sections that are already on the drawer. Again, this doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to sand some of this off, so I don't need it to be exact. It's not like stenciling where you're trying to get a perfect outline or imprint um, depending on the piece that you're working on sometimes you want it to be more perfect than others or cleaner than others and so I'm just going to apply this to each little section and then using the books I will add in the leaf this is a fun way to highlight, you know, little character, really neat characteristics of a piece that might otherwise get missed if you didn't make them stand out a little bit. So I guess that's why I like using it. And plus, this actually adds to, you know, the, the thought or the process that this is a hand-finished piece. You know, you took the time to, to do some extra steps to really make it one of a kind and no one else will have one just like this one. Just about finished here and then we will go on to applying the gold leaf. And remember what I said about the book, so there's always a separator piece of paper between this and your leaf. So I'm going to take this one section right here. This is a messy process, but it's so fun, totally worth it. I'm going to take this here, flip it over, I'm trying to blow this dry a little bit, onto I'm going to flip it over onto this glue on the gilding size. And then I'm just going to burnish it with my fingers a little bit. <clears throat> Get this on here nice and intact. Some people will um, save their extra, especially the sterling silver. It's so light, but if you can capture what is left over, it's good to reuse. So after you pull this off right here, you can see these little indentations where I put the glue. And then when this is dry, like right now, I could probably pull off a little bit of it. Kind of show you how that works. When this is completely dry, then I'll go back over it with the brush and brush off all the loose pieces and then we'll sand it with the steel wool before going on to the next section. Again, you can save your extras in a little baggie, something like that if you want to, depending on how much you have left, and uh, reuse it on another project. All right, now this is dry, and I am getting ready to brush this off. I'm gonna use the round brush for this one in particular. Uh, again, you can use just a simple chip brush that she has. I'm just going to start with the round one. I, I like this little brush. The bristles are kind of soft just in case. I don't want to push too hard on it. You get a little more flexibility with this. So what you're going to do is just lightly brush it off like this. And everywhere that you apply the gilding size is where the gold leaf will stay. After this is completely set, I'm going to probably wait a little bit and then I will come back and do a light sanding with the steel wool like we talked about. So see there's these little imperfections in here and that's okay. Probably some of this will even come off with the sanding. I am not worried about this being in the lines or being perfect. 
And you know, another thing to think about too is that this is um, going to have another sort of a glaze and maybe some wax over the top of the whole piece. So this will tone this down. I don't want this to be really bright gold. That's not the goal here. The goal is like a subtle hint. So you know, a lot of this will even be removed with the sanding, but I want to make sure that it's really, really dry and set well before I actually start sanding it. So here I'm getting ready to remove part of the gold leaf with the 4 aught steel wool. I want it to just kind of look like at one point in time it had a lot of gold leaf, sort of like this, but now there's just a hint of it, sort of a remnant of times gone by. So when you take this over it, you know, just really to focus on the actual leaf part itself. And as you can see, I'm starting to pull this off right here. And it's toning it down quite a bit. I'm going to even go a little bit more, probably until you can see into the inside of where the dresser was covered in milk paint and cracked gesso. And just do it a little bit at a time. Give it this worn look. And then when I go over this the, with the final coating of glaze that I'm planning to use on here, uh, see here, this looks nice because you can kind of tell it's starting to wear off a little bit. And yet still has some gold setting in it. So as I'm doing this on each one of them, then you'll come up with just a hint and, and it'll look really nice at the end, more natural than just these obvious blocks. So we'll just keep going until we get finished with this particular drawer and then move on to the next one. I'm getting ready to make a glaze here for this uh, vintage dresser and so the important thing to remember about this is that it really is just the general recipe of one to one to one, which means one part water, one part glazed over, and then one part either one step paint or you can use the gel stain. Uh, either one would be just fine. So for today, I am going to use one part of the glazed over, one part water, and then one part of Sunday nap. It sort of has a, a light pale beigey pink tone to it. Um, I'm going to put this all over the piece and then the gold that I have sort of uh, sanded down, the gold leaf, I'm adding these muted gold knobs to this piece as well. So hopefully that will match nicely in the end. The really good thing about the, the glaze is that if I don't like the tone, once it's completely dry, I can do a couple different things. I can add another glaze color to the top of the piece or I can go over it with light and dark waxes and kind of change the tone with that as well or even ceruzine wax if I wanted to. So let's get started with this. I'm just going to mix these three together. It's a very, very simple mixture. I'm putting it into this uh, plastic coffee can here. If I have any extra left over, I can stick this in the cabinet and use it for another project. So just adding in one water. Uh, be sure you stir your glaze over up really, really well before you use it. Sometimes it can settle and break down into two different parts, like a clear and then this creamy white color. So I'm just adding this in the second one into my container. And then I'm going to add in one part of this awesome color Sunday nap. Okay. One to one to one, mix it all together. Stir it up really, really well. It's going to be a little bit runny because you've added water to it. Another nice thing about uh, this is it, if you feel like you need it to be a little thinner, you can add more water or more glazed over to it. Uh, I'm just going to go with what I have right here, this equal parts of one, one, one. And I'm going to apply it with a chip brush. I'm going to use the smaller one, the one and a half inch chip brush to apply it to the piece. And then I'm going to Dab it off with a clean, dry, lint-free towel or rag. And to be perfectly frank here, I normally just find my husband's old white t-shirts that he has worn down pretty thin. And I will use those, cut those up, and use those. And sometimes you can just buy them online too. Just be careful that you get the ones that are lint-free because you don't want all those particles ending up in your project when you're trying to pull off your products by using it as a negative tool. 
So I have this all mixed together and I'm getting ready to start putting it on the piece. Here we go. Okay, I'm getting ready to apply the glaze to these drawers. Have this all mixed up here. I'm just gonna add a light coat and then I'm going to pull it off with the, the lint-free clean dry rag. And it's a little bit difficult to tell in the picture, but this has just got a subtle hint of a beigey pink color to it, which I really like. And it sort of also um, ties in the dark with the light finishings underneath. And yet it's sheer enough that you can still see the gold peeking through without being shiny. Like see this one up here is quite a bit shinier than this one down here. I just wanted the subtle hint. So this is working for me. In this way, it's not a super obvious stark difference between the two colors. This blends it in a little bit better and still gives this some depth and also allows a little bit of that gold to peek through. So we'll just keep working through all of the drawers and then I'll go to the main body of the piece and then on to the next step. We're getting ready to add an extra layer of protection to this piece. I'm going to use Mind Your Own Beeswax all over this vintage dresser. Remember with your Mind Your Own Beeswax you just want to shake it up a little bit, get it all stirred together and then just add some of it onto a piece of cardboard like this. And then take Amy's chip brush. I am using the one and a half inch chip brush. I like the thickness of it and the width. It's just, I have better control over it. So I'm actually using this to just add some of the minor beeswax to the brush. And then I'm offloading it just a little bit onto the cardboard. And then I'm just going to lightly apply it and let it dry probably overnight. It's pretty humid here right now, but usually within a, um, in a couple of hours you can buff it out. But I'm going to let it dry um, overnight and then I'm going to probably add some accent on the corners of the drawers, maybe with a dark wax or maybe a mix of minor beeswax with some sort of a Parisian gray or something like that. So let's get this all over the piece and let it set. I want to thank you all for joining me today. I hope that you learned something about the building process that we used on these drawers, how you can highlight certain features in that process to really make it stand out on your piece and add some depth to it as well. And then also, of course, the cracked gesso, how that truly does just add some age or time to your piece. So the top and the bottom, the feet, and then this top portion here, I ended up actually just painting it. I had tried the glazed uh, gel stain and I didn't really like it so I ended up putting on Selznick gray and then a glaze of Park Avenue over the top and on the feet and you'll see that in the end result pictures. Thanks again for joining me and I hope you all have a wonderful week. See you soon.